It is here, it is here, it is here. The iPhone 14 Pro is finally here and man, I am all sorts of excited to actually start using this phone, start getting into the review process, start testing out the cameras. And of course, I just wanna see this thing. So what are we doing here? Let's go ahead and unbox this thing, man. Okay, so right on the front of the box, obviously we have the new design. You can see it right there with that big center cutout, but that is now called the Dynamic Island, and that is actually going to kind of like shift dynamically as you use it. You can see Apple boxes are pretty simple at this point, no shrink wrap either, uh, and they just have like these pull tabs on the back. So let's go ahead and pull this up, and then, voila, there it is. Uh, the iPhone 14 Pro Max, this is the bigger 6.7 inch version, and this is the new uh, deep purple color, and I gotta say, uh, you see this thing in photos, you see this thing in videos, but seeing this in person, first impressions, whoo, I kind of like this color a lot. It is a deep purple. It's it's not gonna be like this purple over here back me. It's a little bit deeper than that. See how we got the purple in the back? That's, that's a nice touch for the video, isn't it? So yeah, we got the deep purple uh, iPhone 14 Pro Max, looking great. Obviously, uh, there's other stuff in the box too. Not that much anymore, because Apple took a lot of that out, but you do get a USB-C to lightning cable. You do get documentation. Is there a purple Apple sticker? That is actually a good, it's just white. And yes, look at this, no SIM card ejector tool in the box. This is all eSIM now, so even like the documentation, what Apple includes in these iPhone boxes, this year, it is pretty minimal. It is, it is pretty Spartan. Uh, inside of the box itself. There's not much here, but all right, who cares about the box? What we care about is the iPhone itself. And I just gotta say, again, looking at this right off the bat, that camera bump is getting really big. It is huge compared to the iPhone 13 Pro. I have my iPhone 13 Pro actually in my pocket. Let us try and see. Now this is the smaller version of the 13 Pro but like just the way the cameras are raised on it, maybe not necessarily the bump itself, but the lenses, man, that is, it's getting big, man. I don't even wanna know what the iPhone 15 is gonna look like. These are really starting to stick out. I think I'm belaboring the point though, but uh, let's go ahead and do that satisfying peel wrap off the screen. Look at that. We can kind of get our first glimpses of the dynamic island. Maybe you can, cause it's actually pretty dark looking at the camera but uh, let me see if I can put that in the light. You can see that, but let's go ahead and turn it on. Uh, but look at this, we got it turned on. Uh, you can see that cut out on the top, no more notch. Now we have the dynamic island, but I don't wanna bore you with the whole setup process. So let me set this iPhone up. Let me start using it for a little bit and then I will come back with my initial impressions and we'll talk about this phone. All right, I set up the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I've been playing with it for a bit. Man, is this an amazing phone. I have not had a phone experience like this probably since the iPhone 10. Everything feels very new to this phone and I think a lot of that has to do with the dynamic island. Uh, the way that Apple implemented this software feature into the camera cutout, which probably should have been a weakness for this phone, it is just so cool. It makes it one of the hallmark features of this phone and you're glad to have it. All the animations that play out, the way you interact with it, it is just really great. Uh, but first of all, listen, uh, you're probably looking at this wallpaper and you're probably going, Greg, that's a cool wallpaper. How can I get that wallpaper? Because everyone's been asking me for these wallpapers since I showed them off in like the last two videos. Well, guess what? You can go get them. Uh, I will leave a link in the pinned comment and also in the description and you can go buy these wallpapers. Uh, we got a whole array of these wallpapers that are perfectly going to match the iPhone 14 Pro's color schemes. And yes, our wallpapers are optimized for iOS 16's new lock screen, and you can even get this really cool effect where the time goes behind these bubbles. So this is our bubble wallpaper pack. It's gonna be $5, and this was made by LD Vova on Twitter. We're doing this as a partnership, so you're gonna support the channel if you buy this wallpaper pack, and you're also gonna help support LD Vova, an amazing concept artist, and, and apparently amazing at making wallpapers. So go ahead and go buy those, and uh, yeah, tag, us, tag me on Twitter, tag him on Twitter, let us know how you like them. But enough self-promo, I never do self-promo. Give me, give me one chance to do self-promo. All right, let me talk about my experience using this phone. Uh, first of all, let me mention the color again. I really like the deep purple color, in natural sunlight especially. Man, it just shines. It looks really, really nice. Uh, another thing I must say I'm wrong about, and I kind of teased it before, 
is the dynamic island itself. And what do I necessarily mean by I was wrong? Uh, well, when we first started seeing the rumors or the concepts floating around of Apple maybe using a pill shape cutout or an eye hole cutout for the new iPhone 14 Pro, uh, I said in a lot of videos that, listen, this is not gonna be a big deal either way. Uh, if you're coming from a notch, if you're going to a pill shape cutout, it's still gonna basically take up the same display area. It's just a different look aesthetically. And I was wrong about that. Again, I didn't know about the dynamic island feature that Apple was developing when they made this phone, but I was wrong in saying that it wouldn't impact your usage of the phone because what Apple did here with this dynamic island does impact your use of the phone. This cool software feature really makes this cutout stand out. And it's more than just the visual of the dynamic island of maybe you're listening to a podcast and you swipe up and then the podcast goes into the island over here. Or, you know, maybe you go ahead and you, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and set a timer. And when we start that timer, we swipe up and it's gonna go into the dynamic island. It is more than just that visual cue of the thing swiping up and going into the top of the display because this is actually functionally useful as well. And what I mean by that is, this is kind of like its own little multitasking area. Like, look, when I go press the podcast over here, it's gonna take me to the podcast. But now look, the timer's up here and I can just press that and it'll quickly go back to my timer and, and vice versa. Look, I can go back to the podcast app. It's kind of like a really cool way to multitask on iOS not true multitasking, like split screen multitasking, but you can go back and forth between apps very quickly that you have stored up here in the dynamic island. And the dynamic island to me is just classic Apple playfulness with their user interface. Uh, look at this, like when you swipe up, look at the animation of that just going into the island, uh, then showing you the timer. Like that is slick, that is just so nice. Uh, I, like I know I just got the phone, but so far every time I've been using it, I just get delighted seeing all those animations play out. Like even like going into the lock screen and you see the little lock up here and, and I go to scan face ID, seeing that just take place up there, swiping up like that. I mean, it looks really great. Uh, I'll also credit the display in other ways besides the cool dynamic island. Uh, it is very bright. Apple increased the max brightness on this display to 2000 nits, took it outside in bright, sunny day, I don't think there's like a cloud in the sky. And yeah, that thing is super bright. You can see this thing in direct sunlight, no problem, like no problem at all. Um, it just gets super bright. I will say though, when it is when it is outside in that bright sunlight, one thing was apparent to me, and that was that this kind of illusion of the dynamic island uh, was kind of broken in a way because you can actually see the separation between where the camera cutout is and where the face ID sensor is on the phone. Not a major concern for me. It wasn't like, oh my God, look at this, I'm noticing it. But hey, you could kind of see like, yeah, this thing is kind of like an eye shape cutout in reality. And then the always on display. So this is the first time that Apple is introducing an always on display. It's only available on the pro phones. And you can just see right here, look, this is the display on. When I turn it off, it dims the whole display and everything's there, right? Like my music was playing, it's still there. You can still see the time. You can even still see my wallpaper. It's just in a very, very dim state. And then when I wake it up, it just gets brighter. So this is probably the most literal interpretation of an always on display uh, that I have ever seen. It is kind of literally just always on. Now there's a lot of other things to talk about with the iPhone 14 Pro, um, namely the new chipset with the A16 chip and a lot of the things that I'm gonna discover as I use this phone, I really can't talk about yet. This phone is still technically setting up. There's still apps downloading in the background. I really can't run a Geekbench right now. Uh, but you know, you can see it's a new chip, Has it still has six gigabytes of RAM, but that's something I'm gonna have to leave for the full review uh, and, and just generally using this phone. I need a lot more time with it before I can really tell you if it's a major change over the iPhone 13 Pro that I was using before. Uh, but I did wanna comment very quickly on probably the most important feature for people looking to buy an iPhone nowadays, and that is the camera system. I mentioned before in the unboxing, this camera system looks pretty big compared to the 13 Pro, just the way the lenses stick out. It, it is a focal point of this phone, and, and obviously it's a reason why a lot of people choose to upgrade nowadays. Um, now, obviously, wait for the full review before you really learn my camera insights on this, but I did wanna try and test out uh, some of the features on the camera uh, and, and tell you about it. So. Obviously, just took a couple snapshots with the main camera, and yeah, I think they look good. Uh, I can't really tell if they're really that different from my iPhone 13 Pro, 
But yeah, uh, first impressions are, yeah, these photos look great, but the 13 Pro photos look pretty good too. So I, I really can't judge it yet. But yes, uh, some of the things about the 14 Pro camera are noticeably better for me. Um, one of them is the new 2X mode. And that kind of does that by cropping into the 48 megapixel sensor that this camera now has, it has a larger sensor on the 14 Pro, and it can just crop in, kind of use the full detail of still getting like a 12 megapixel readout and just kind of giving you a digitally zoomed 2X picture. And yeah, I was like doing a 1X, 2X, and 3X. And when I looked at the 2X, I went, it's not as zoomed in as the 3X, but as the image quality looks on this picture, I would say it looks a fair bit better than the 3X. So kind of glad that's uh, back with the uh, 14 Pro Max. And I'm, I'm kind of glad we have all these different quick focal lengths we can toggle between. Uh, another thing I will say about the camera is that I mentioned it's a 48 megapixel camera. Well, by default, if Apple spit out 48 megapixel images, they're gonna be huge file sizes. So what Apple had to do is basically bin these pixels together to give you a 12 megapixel image. However, you can take advantage of the full 48 megapixel readout uh, by putting this into pro raw mode. And I did test that out just for like a few photos. And uh, what I will say is that you will notice a difference here. Um, so I took this photo, I took it with the pixel binning for the 12 megapixel. And then I took the same shot, put it in pro raw so we can get 48 megapixels. By the way, when I took this photo in pro raw, I think it was about 58, 60 megabytes of photos. So. Just be careful, it's gonna fill up your storage fast, but now at first glance, if you look at this photo, you're probably gonna be like, okay, nothing too crazy here. Uh, but when you actually like zoom in on details, like let's zoom in on this uh, sign over here, you can see the text on the 48 megapixel when we digitally crop in is sharper than the 12 megapixel. It's not compressed as much. You get a lot more detail retention and you're able to zoom in more. Uh, so maybe zoomed out, you're probably not gonna notice like a huge difference, but if you actually like, crop in photos, zoom in a little bit. You want the fine details of that photo to stand out. This new Pro Raw with the 48 megapixel full readout is probably gonna be beneficial to you. Uh, there's also other new features I wanted to just quickly go over. So the camera now does 4K in cinematic mode. Last year on the 13 Pro, it only did 1080p. I said in my review that I thought the 1080p looked a little bit soft. So Apple kind of fixed that. And here's a test video of the 4K cinematic mode. No cameraman today. So hopefully the uh, automatic cinematic mode is uh, good today. So, you know, we're just out here t testing the camera and the microphone with the new cinematic mode. Hopefully it looks good and it's now in 4K and I'm using the new 24 frames per second option. Obviously still a lot more testing to do. I didn't even have a camera person to do that. So I still wanna put it through its paces, but it looks okay. The blurring's still a little bit off, but uh, definitely much sharper than last time. And then the new action mode where you can kind of like move fast with this camera and it should be stabilized took two uh, test videos, one with the stabilization off and then one with the stabilization on and I saw a noticeable difference. So you can kind of use this phone without any sort of gimbal to stabilize it. And if you're moving around, running around with it, uh, you should be able to actually get some pretty steady shots with it. So I think that's gonna be a, a, a feature that a lot of people are gonna be using on this phone. Oh, also the front facing camera did get a noticeable improvement on both the 14 Pro and the regular 14. And I took a selfie with it and I was like, okay, this does look a little bit better. Uh, maybe too good, because I was looking at all the imperfections in my face and I went, oh my gosh, that captured like everything. That captured all the all the wrinkles and all the freckles and everything. So, you know, maybe, maybe I would like a little bit softer on the front facing camera. I don't want to see this hideous face all the time, but it is what it is, it is what it is, but yeah. Uh, that is my first impressions of the 14 Pro Max. Obviously, this is not a super in-depth video. That is going to take time to pan out. I, I at least like to spend a good time amount of my phones before I do a proper full review. Uh, so I can't spit that out today, but hopefully you found these first impressions insightful uh, and hopefully you found the video overall enjoyable. As you can probably tell, I'm really excited about this phone. I, I didn't think I was going into the event and the more we learned about this phone, uh, now having to spend some time with it, I, I just think that this is one of those rare circumstances where we're getting something pretty new here it, that kind of really does change the way you use your phone. And the last time I could honestly say that about the iPhone was probably with the iPhone 10. This definitely feels like the iPhone design for the next five years or, or something very similar to this. So yeah, really enjoying my time so far with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. That is my first impressions. It's, it's a great phone. If you got one, I think you're really going to enjoy it. 
And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below. Did you pick up an iPhone 14 today? Did you pick up an iPhone 14 Pro? Do you plan on picking one up? And let me know if you've got one, are you enjoying it so far? And then also let me know, what do you think your favorite feature is going to be on it? Uh, and also don't forget about the wallpaper pack. It's gonna be in the description below. You can download it there, help support the channel, help support LD Vova on Twitter. And yeah, I think that's it. I, th I think I got everything out of the way. So hey, if you like the video, give it a like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.